Welcome to the Ugly Bug Podcast, a production of the Ugly Bug Fly Shop and Crazy Rainbow Fly Fishing. Welcome to the Ugly Bug Podcast. On today's episode, we sit down with Andy Brust, a uh, very you know uh, well-respected veteran fishing guide here on the North Platte, and definitely uh, a streamer guru. There's not many people that have a streamer collection or the streamer knowledge that Andy possesses. Uh, so we pick his brain about streamer fishing, everything from you know beginner uh, issues and uh, quality equipment and gear, all the way to kind of some more advanced tactics. So. Uh, we look forward to that. Um, stick around here. We're going to take a quick step away and hear a word from our sponsors. The Ugly Bug Podcast is proudly sponsored by Flyoming. Wyoming rooted fly fishing apparel and accessories challenging the traditional mold designed by anglers for anglers. Andy, thanks for joining me. You bet. I'm glad to have you in. Mm-hmm. Figured we'd uh, take on the subject of streamer fishing. Okay. It's kind of a giant subject. Yeah. There's a whole kinds of crap. But yep. um, how many years now have you been guiding on the plat? Oh, I think it's pushing 15. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. A lot of trips. A lot of trips. Elbows are hanging in there. Yep. Yeah. We're getting old, but yeah, we're hanging <laughs> yeah. in there. And uh, I guess personally, when I think of streamer fishing on the plat, I kind of think of you. So, that's one reason <laughs> we wanted to pull you in for that. Uh-huh. Um, We'll just start off by, like, someone is looking to get into it. I assume most people that are, you know, really tuning in to learn about streamer fishing obviously have done a little bit of leg work. But, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, what's kind of like your favorite rod weight setup sort of thing for, for Western streamer fishing? Um, I guess I kind of like a, I like a longer one out of the boat, um, mm-hmm. a 10-footer. Uh, so, like, a 10-foot 7-weight. Um, that Helios is a really good one for that. Yeah. It's got the backbone and you can still get it where you want it. So um, if I'm bank fishing, I, I go for like a nine footer just because of the back cast and everything else. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, pretty heavy lines. Generally a streamer line or are you kind of all over the map with sink tip streamer lines and floating um, both lines? It depends or? on the water and how the fish are acting. Um, I guess this time of year you can either go a, uh, you know, heavier flies and uh, a floating line mm-hmm. or, you know, a, a light sink and, you know, some lighter flies and get it down there. Yeah. Um, they're not real fast right now, those fish. So right. you got you to gotta kind of slow it down a little bit this time of year. Yeah. Um, kind of bonk them in the face before they'll eat it sometimes. So, right. Yeah. Drag it in there. Yeah. So we're, we're filming this in the cold weather months. So yeah, yeah, they definitely get a little more lethargic. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Everything slows down a little bit. Yeah. With that, I assume you try to slow down retrieval rates a little bit. Yeah. Um, taper that. Almost even dragging it sometimes in this cold stuff. You know, those, those crawdads are kind of climbing on the bottom and, you know, leeches aren't moving real fast. Mm-hmm. Um, even the minnows aren't, aren't really jetting around. So, right. um, yeah, just kind of matching the hatch, I guess, um, with the speed of that. Yeah. You know, as the summer comes on, you can start seeing more of the, the bait fish and the minnows and stuff. And so that, that's when I speed it up and, you know, start stripping it a little faster and jerkier. Yeah. So. On your retrieve visit, <clears throat> I guess someone that's super green to it, what's your, do you have them hang it in their trigger finger and strip from behind the trigger finger? Or do yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. I like having control with that trigger finger. Yeah. Um, that way you don't miss any sets or, you know, if you got to pick it up and throw it again, you got control of that. Yeah. 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 And then do you have a like standard retrieval rate, a strip it quick off the bank and let it fall? Or are you just kind of a, um, it depends on the weight of the fly, I guess too. Mm -hmm. So some of that where you're hitting the banks, you know, you want to give it a second for it to sink and settle there. Um, there's other times where I'm, I'm ripping it as fast as you can right off the bank. Um, that's more of that, that real high water where it's flooded and everything, you know. Um, I guess this time of year, I'm, I'm kind of just going real slow and just, just stripping it through those fish. Yeah. I guess is the way I say that. Um, just keep pulling, and sometimes that, those flies will just stop down there this time of year. So, yeah. Um, so you really don't have them do any sort of variance. If they feel a tug, just keep stripping the line just, until yeah, it's Yeah, strip tight. it real hard, and then if nothing's there, you know, just you can kind of pause it. Mm-hmm. let that thing die again and and you'll pick up some fish that way too so yeah yep. are you uh do you have them 
do anything different when they get like closer to the boat as far as speed or consistency? Um, sometimes, uh, like right now they're, they're pretty deep, but like summertime fishing, um, it's almost a figure eight. You'll see some of those brown trout come mm-hmm. right up to the boat and, you know, take some swipes at it. So I kind of slow it down and mess it around. You know, if you do get one chasing it all the way back, then, you know, give them a chance to eat it right at the boat yeah. there. So I never feel like I can make the right judgment there, right? I'll, yeah. like, I'll yeah. let it pause and then they swim away. Or mm-hmm. next time I'm like, oh, I'm going to strip it quicker <laughs> and then they swim away. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. Every now and then I'm fortunate enough to make it work. But yeah, yeah. I always seem to guess wrong. Or even getting that strip set when they're up that close too. It's uh, you have no place for your rod or anything, you know. So it's yeah. it a little tough there. Yeah. Uh, when so obviously there's kind of two different segments. One being you know if you're wade fishing, the other in a drift boat. Yep. So when you're in a drift boat and you have two anglers casting, do you have them you know square their shoulders to the side of the bank? that you're fishing and try I to do. throw it 90 degrees pretty or, much yeah that yeah. kind of saves from crossing the lines and everything else and uh i kind of like that you know keeping tension to your to your flies so you're pulling it straight back and you you can feel every little bump and stuff mm-hmm. you know not having too much of a, a slack line in there like jerking it mm-hmm. um, i see a lot of guys miss their fish when they you know when they're using their rod tip to control that right um not always but i mean some of those fish are you know they'll eat it and turn real fast, and you got a slack line, and they're they're yep. gone. So yeah, um, yeah. I try and have them keep their rod tips down and you know ninety degrees to the bank, mm-hmm. um, almost in the water with the rod tips. I, I feel like that kind of helps with the uh, with the old trout hook set. Yeah, um, keeping it down, you know. So in trout hook set, you're talking about lifting the rod. <laughs> yeah, yeah, going yep. vertical with it. Mm-hmm. I don't think a lot of people realize that you know when a a bait fish, especially as a baiting prey, they rarely rise in the water column. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Their natural instinct is to speed up. Find or something go, to hide in. Yeah, find yeah. something to hide in. So often with a strip set, if you miss them or they tail grab it or whatever it may be, or they're trying to stun it, yep. right, that if you just kind of continue to keep doing what you're doing, they'll come back and eat it again versus yeah. if you raise it, most of the time it's over with, right? Mm-hmm. You take it away from them, they're not going to find it. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. But then, like you say, you got to keep it moving sometimes, too. Otherwise, they, you know, don't like it no more and swim away. So. Yeah. Yeah. I used to fish with an old-timer in Montana that always had a – his favorite method was to use the rod tip to manipulate the line mm-hmm. so you'd move more like a horizontal jigging motion, mm-hmm. right? And then strip your slack back to neutral, okay. back to 12 o'clock. Uh-huh. And it, you know, I noticed some decent results with it. I think it, in a weird way, presented more like 90 degree angles, yeah. right? It made yeah, the fish swim, in a little. swim a little in an yeah. S-curve series. Yeah. Um, and when you kind of look at the science of it all, right, when a fish can attack bait from a 90 degree angle, yeah, like they'll rarely eat it. Well, one, they don't really ever see bait fish swimming straight at them, yep. right? Yep. And then sometimes they'll peel off and follow it and eat it yeah. tail first. But big predatory fish would rather eat it head first or sideways yep. and then turn it. Well, and you think about, like, their uh, their fins, you know, they're not made to go down their throats backwards. So mm-hmm. they got to eat them head first. So they're either going to stun it or, you know, aim for that head. Mm-hmm. Um, so even if they're back there, you know, short striking it. Um, they're usually going to come back and come back and yeah. try and get a big bite of it, you know. Sometimes so. a little easier said than done if you <laughs> yeah. fe- feel them and not take it away from them sort of thing. Yeah, or right? even seeing them, Or too. see them and seeing they smash them is it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, for sure. So um, so really at a 90-degree angle out of the drift boat, you're actually, being the drift boat's kind of still moving, you're really, in theory, you're very slightly quartering towards the back, right? Because the yeah. belly of the line is dragging. Yeah, dragging downhill. But also ways. helping keep tension yeah. as the retrieval comes comes in. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think, uh, are you a believer at higher water that you increase that angle towards the rear a little bit, or do you try to stay pretty well normal with that and um, just increase speed? I usually just increase the speed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that way I can keep both those guys, you know, um, going towards their spots on the bank and we don't have one going back or forth. And, 
you know, getting to the, the spot where you're back casting over the top of each other. Yeah. Um, getting tangles that way too. So I try and keep them in their lanes, you know, and, and yeah. Yeah. keep them from casting over the top of each other. Keep the lefty in the front if you yep, happen to have yep. a lefty. <laughs> yeah, yep. avoid as many of those as you can. That's right. Yeah. Um, so when you're fishing from shore, are you trying to throw a cross current, or are you increasing your angles one way or the other I'm a little bit more? Kind of hitting then? all of it from shore. I feel mm-hmm. like you know there's some rocks out in the middle that need to get fished, and then uh, there's definitely some pockets on the sh- on the bank that need it too. So I'm kind of doing everything and then i'll move up, move my way up river with it or down river i guess but yeah um uh, i feel like you get more more eats coming down river and, and straight across when you're wade fishing um, instead of pulling it up the river right um, it's pretty unnatural for those fish to be doing that but yeah um it depends there's some eddies in there too where that current's kind of switching around and so um those bait fish don't know which way they're going so right sometimes that works too yeah so yeah very cool what weight rod are you generally uh most of the time a seven so um, a six will do it on this river too you know mm-hmm. um we're not throwing giant huge flies um but yeah some of them are pretty heavy especially when you get two of them on there so yeah yep. is your preference to run one or run two or um i like running two most of the time you know give them a give them an opportunity either one mm-hmm. um, unless they're really keyed in on something but um yeah um sometimes it's a big one and a small one sometimes it's you know two big ones or two small ones but do you have a belief on like opposite colors do you throw bright and dark at the same time or do you kind of stay in the same color family and move through um, i kind of switch them up give them something different with mm-hmm. it um whether it's a little bait fish chasing a leech or, you know, just having the leech on there that they can see, um, you know, putting, putting the two of them together, I, I feel like it helps to uh, utilize your time out there, I guess, more. Yeah. So. I think sometimes there's that weird, I guess, at least in my belief, there's a weird, like, predatory instinct. Mm-hmm. If another fish sees yeah. bait yeah. fish trying, moving quick or trying, I've always believed that, like, there's just something instinctual. Yeah. They see yep. a bunch of food or a bunch of fish acting one way. They want to go inspect and see yep. what's going on, right? Yep. yep. I also think, personally, I always attributed a little bit to jealousy of, like, that little 8-inch rainbow is going to go eat that leech. I'll yeah. show him yeah. sort of deal, That's right? right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're all after those monsters, right? Yeah. Yep. So um, do you vertically – strip or jig like when you're wade fishing on a shelf do you try to let it tumble off the shelf and then like move it vertically or do you always kind of stay rod tip down yeah and that a lot of that kind of depends on the bait that i'm using too if it's a crawdad you know i definitely jig that more Mm -hmm. and do that swimming um even leeches do a bunch of that in the water too so um yeah I, i think the longer you can keep it in front of that fish the better chance you got too sure so if you're slowing it down you know wiggling it in front of them um you know, he's going to get mad and either take a swipe at it or, or decide he's hungry. So. Yeah. Um, so kind of go to, let's jump to fly lines a little bit on like, are you running a sink tip or a full sink or what's your um, kind of. I like a, I like a slow sink tip on this river. Slow we don't stink. have the, you know, we don't have the big fast banks most of the time here. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, kind of fishing the whole thing back to the boat you know it's not just the bank so that slow sink kind of keeps it in the zone longer yeah um a lot of these fish i mean this time of year they're not up towards the top so you got to get it down to the bottom but you don't want to be hanging on the bottom in there yeah um yeah just kind of letting it flutter down in the in the strike zone down there you know yeah and then are you running uh traditional leader or are you just running level line off the end or I'll pretty much go level line i'll go you know straight 15 pound off of my fly line um i still do run a swivel on there too so i'll run like okay. 15 pound and then i'll sometimes i'll jump to 12 or, or just stick with the 15 but i think that swivel gives it another kind of hinge point in there okay and gives it another spot to you know move around there yeah too, so and then so from swivel i mean is your normal like a four four feet to the swivel and then a foot from there or how yeah. do you kind of break it yeah. down when so you go down the leader i guess on on my personal rod i got a 
I got a 20 pound chunk of uh, Maxima that's about four foot long just to give it a stiff butt section on there. Mm-hmm. And then I'll go a liter and then like to 12 pound, um, probably two foot after the swivel, okay. somewhere in there. And then depending on if I want another fly, um, I'll go off of the back of that too. Do you run another two foot chunk or approximately? Yeah, about yep. two foot, somewhere in there. And you're putting them on loop knots or on standard um, clinch both, knots? Or? Yeah, most of the time it's on a loop knot, both of them. Um, if I got an articulated one on the front, I go to the, the front hook bend. You tie um, off the front hook bend, not the rear hook bend. Yeah, to, to leave that other one free out there. More motion, mm-hmm. yeah, makes it, sense. It doesn't seem to twist up any more than the other way. Mm-hmm. Um, it still gives that fly motion up there in the front, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I rarely do that. I usually, I'm always the like standard streamer up front and the articulated in the back to try to maximize movement. But yeah, it makes sense. I've just never tried to tie off to the front hook. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you tie the rear hook and then it's just a yeah fixed mm-hmm. right. It slows it all down. Doesn't make it wiggle. Yeah, doesn't give it that movement. Yeah, so, um, yeah. That front hook works pretty good. Um, there is another loop knot that you can tie in the front. You know, it's a uh, where you can put both of them on a loop knot. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a pretty cool trick on there too. Um, keeps everything in line and uh, yeah, pretty good stuff. I like the level line idea and a little heavier tippet when you're throwing six dollar, yeah, seven dollar streamers. Yeah, yep. snap them off in a tree, yeah, right? Or, or even worse than that, you know, lose a big fish because of it. You know, mm-hmm. so you're always going to get some nicks and stuff when you're pulling across some rocks and logs and yeah, um, yeah. Not the time for that yeah. line to break, you know. So you generally fluorocarbon on your bug side yep. to help yep. reduce nicks yep. and tension, and yeah, mm-hmm. that's very cool. Um, when you go into fly design, do you do you take into account like slower retrieve? Or are you trying to run a dumbbell lie to um, orient yes. the hook point up? Or I uh, I don't mess around with that too much. I mean, some of those jig hooks are pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, when they bounce on the bottom like that, but um, I'm not trying to rub it right on the bottom. So, um, yeah, most of the time I'm I'm either a cone head or or even those uh, oh those tungsten, um, you know, just a, a tungsten bead on the front there mm-hmm. um, gets it down pretty quick too. So yeah, um, yeah. Do you? Uh so our, I guess w- if we go back to like fly design a little bit, are you generally looking for like lighter, wispy, more movement sort of streamers? Is that kind of your first grab, or are you you trying to get some, you know? Um, I'm kind of going for some uh, a little bit denser. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean the stuff that we have in this river is, is you know the crawdads and stuff. They're pretty dense, and um, yeah, I mean some of those leeches are are. You know, mm-hmm. they, they kind of flutter around. But the minnows and the crawdads, I feel like they're pretty dense, and you just want to keep that, that silhouette going down there, I guess. Yeah. More than anything. Are you a big believer in uh, dark dark flies in lower light conditions and brighter bugs and brighter, or do you pay attention more to, like, water clarity and try to match that it's scheme? more water clarity on this river. Um, yeah. You know, it's a... The sparkle obviously helps in the dirtier water, mm-hmm. um, and then more natural when it's when it's real clear. And I try and get away from some of that sparkly stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. Our our bait fish and stuff in here aren't real sparkly anyhow. You know, they kind of got that that dull color to them. So yeah, yeah. Lots of baby rainbows. Yeah, yep. but they just don't really. For most people, they, you know, when a rainbow is real small, like their stripe and color isn't yeah. that great their silver is actually more of like a slate gray versus yeah. a yeah. super shiny mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. it's yeah, always amazed that. me that like i'm that spinner yeah and it makes sense it works because you got a fluttering blade but like mm-hmm. a minnow of that size really isn't bright silver the way no. a map spinner no. blade is no, right? not. no that's yeah. a predatory instinct kicking in on them and yeah you know seeing something sparkly so. yeah have you started messing with the uh, multiple articulated you know with all the game changer stuff and multiple bit. joints yeah yeah, yeah I, I i don't know if it's uh that critical on our river um the the motion and stuff with these you know we have enough current that it's moving and you know yeah um 
I mean, you want a little bit of movement, obviously, but right. Yeah, a lot of work goes into those game changers. Too. Yeah, it's kind of hard to make a living <laughs> guiding on yeah. sixteen dollars streamers, it too, is. right? Yeah. A lot yeah. of Russian olives out there, so. right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, they seem to eat them up pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah, but they're kind of fun to throw and they unique are. the way they swim. They yeah. sure do move. They do move, yep, yep. for sure. Um, so, you know, we're a little unique here on the plat. Like, we don't have much – we don't have sculpins. Really, our bait fish are baby browns, baby rainbows. Yeah. Yep. And then you'd kind of mentioned, you know, leeches, crawfish. Yeah. Um, you know, my grandpa, like, used to always fish a woolly worm. Yeah. Yep. And I don't really think they're eating as a worm. They're eating as a crane fly larva or yeah. just Baby a leech. Or, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's where a lot of my patterns come in. It's, it's you know, kind of a mixture between leeches and crawdads and, you know, a little bit of sparkle sometimes for a, a minnow too. So Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know exactly, like, what they're eating that rusty trombone for, you know. It's a, you know, it could be a leech, a crawdad, or a, a bait fish. So. Bait fish, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's always... The leech thing is always interesting, you know, being in the shop so much. Like, um, a lot of people just don't think about fishing leeches as streamers. Yeah. yeah. Or the leeches that they have seen are, like, giant bunny leeches that Mm -hmm. when you really look at, like, a leech in the water compared to a giant bunny leech, they don't look in You know, a leech is often, like, the diameter of a pen or a pencil, right? Yeah. They're not a big glob. Yeah. Right. Not not here. Yeah, not here. Yeah. Um, But... Yeah, I mean, a small pine squirrel leech or a hothead, or I'm yeah. sure you've thrown, like, John Barr's slump buster sort yep. of thing, right? Yep. And just, yep. It's pretty simple, but it, it is, is effective. And they do work, yeah. 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 Do you have kind of go-to crawdad streamer pattern when you... Um, Not really. I mean, I, I, I tie some. I, mean, I, I do like those sex dungeons at certain times and, mm-hmm. you know, some of his other, those Nancy P's and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, they have their days, but... Um, yeah, I, I guess I, it's more about the silhouette instead of those pinchers and stuff, I feel like. So, um, yeah, kind of just some stuff that I've tied up and that right. seems to work. So Yeah. Do you generally fish those in, like, a gray, or are you fishing darker, like, uh, A little darker, and, yeah, olive yeah. and, uh, you know, brown, um, even a tan. Mm-hmm. Um, I do throw some black stuff, too, but... Um, seems like that brown and, and the olive is kind of my go-to colors. Yeah. Um, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that, that thin mint kind of has all of it, you know, all of it put together. Mm-hmm. So um, that's another good one that can be anything out there. So yeah, it's just, yeah. And I've, uh, I've seen your streamer collection. It's, uh, it's not quite as impressive as my fly shop streamer <laughs> collection, but it's pretty no, damn close, it's, it's right? A little more wore out than that. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's pretty impressive. Do you have a, you know, I've fished with people that have, like they kind of have a system, right? Where they like, all right, we're gonna, I'm gonna start with white, and then I'm gonna move mm-hmm. to olive, and then I'm gonna, you know, move through this progression. Do you, do yeah. you just trust your your instinct on it, or do you have more of a set kind of? This is usually my go-to, and I'm going to start I got there a couple and work from that there. I start with, yeah, um, little baby rainbow pattern is mm-hmm. a good one. You know, I, I like those laser legals. Yeah, about that size. You know, I mean that's a that's a great size for these fish, and you know, not not just to target after the trophy ones, but to get a bunch of fish in too. So right. Um, yeah, it's, it's usually like one of those, and and a thin mint. I mean, is. Uh, I've caught some of the biggest fish I've caught on this river has been on a thin mint, you know, yep. stripping that thing. So um, that's definitely a good one. Um, but like those peanut envies, and um, I tie a couple like that, like your ditch witch, and mm-hmm. um, those are great ones too. Um, that size seems to be the ticket around here. So if you, when you have someone hook up with a solid fish, um, your kind of cues and tactics there, do you, have them just keep stripping do you have them I get, slow roll it and get it on the reel kind of what's your go-to if you you know some yeah, walk I, someone I have through them, it uh, get those big strip sets in you know mm-hmm. um, if they have to you know even do a couple of them to get that thing buried and then i like having, having them fight it on the reel mm-hmm. um, just because i trust that mechanical more than their hands you know so yeah um, i've seen a lot of big fish come off you know or that fish turns to make a run and he's he's yeah. gone so 
my old boss in Montana said, trust the real, it doesn't have adrenaline. Yeah, right? yeah that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No he- human error in that one. So, right. Um, now, how about those fish that, like, come to the surface and just start kind of snake rolling and wallowing? Do you just keep stripping? And um, if No, you... I usually try and give them a little bit of slack then. Yeah. Um, I feel like if you keep stripping, it's just going to pull that thing out when they're rolling. Yeah. Um, so I try and, and get them off of the surface if I can. So just give them just a little bit of slack, let them bury that head again and, and stop that roll. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it gets your heart pumping when they do that. Right. Yeah. So real big fish, do you try to get, I mean, is obviously to land them is the eventual goal, but through the fight, do you try to get your boat positioned on the downstream side of the fish so that you're fighting fish and current? Yeah. 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 And try and fight them, yeah, upriver. Try um, not to let the fish get ahead of the boat, right? Yeah, so you're dragging yeah. it straight upstream. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and keep that that tension, and that that'll keep that hook buried in the corner of his mouth there too. You know? Yeah. So. Um, yeah, and then uh, try to not get them too excited when you do see the big yeah, fish. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's a that's a big deal for them guys. So. Yeah, my uh, I've got a long time client staying that years ago he he hooked this just jumbo cutthroat, and uh, I actually got out of the boat like a knucklehead, like the air of why did I give up the boat advantage, right? Yep. But thought we were yep. ready to land it and jumped out of the boat and run down. And took a stab at it and missed it, and it took <laughs> off. And uh, Stan kind of saw it roll, and I was like, uh, nah, don't worry, Stan, it's not as big as you think, right? <laughs> and he just wigged. He was like, screw you. I just saw it. Get your fat ass in the boat, <laughs> right? I paddled yeah. like, yeah, well, luckily we landed it because – he didn't ever let me live it down if we yeah. never landed it. But, yeah, I was trying to keep him calm, but it didn't work because yeah. he, he saw it, yeah. right? I made yeah. the mistake of letting him see it. And obviously made the mistake of getting out of the boat. But it was a pretty comical deal. He tells the story quite often because he's like, Blake was using his soft, soothing voice, right? And he's like, he wasn't fooling me, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I knew damn well. So, sweet. Um any other, you know, kind of odd, you know, odds and ends, words of advice that you can lend people other than uh, stay persistent because it's not always uh, yeah. gangbusters every day sort of deal, yeah. you know? Um, it's worth it when it does happen, but um, I'd say you just got to gotta think about your hatch, you know, matching your hatch with the streamers, and that'll, that'll kind of dictate your speed on your retrieve and uh, where you're throwing it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like this time of year, you, like I say, you can fish these big soft spots, and there's going to be some fish laying in there um, or cruising around looking for food, you know. so Yeah. Um, and then, obviously, once you get to, like, the fast riffles and stuff, if you go over to, like, the, the big horn, I mean, I'm, you're throwing it in six inches of water, so you're stripping it pretty quick up Gotta there. Got to keep you know? it moving. Yeah. Yeah. But there's some big fish that will sit in that shallow stuff, too, so. Yeah. Um, I know you're not huge on social media, but do you have- if anyone's trying to check things out, you got Instagram, Facebook. Uh, I, you know I do any? got some, yeah. Yep. I don't put a whole bunch on it. Yeah. I'll leave that for you guys. But <laughs> And well, that's at, what's your Instagram address? Or? Uh, Wild Breast. Okay. Um, yeah. And then. Obviously, if someone's interested in booking, they can call the shop. Yeah, call the shop. Get on your schedule. Yeah, let's go streamer fishing. I Better do it quick because yeah. you're starting to fill up. <laughs> it is starting to fill up. I was up, looking so. at your May today. There's not a whole lot of space in there. No, there's you're not. Gonna, yep. You're going to uh, lose a little bit of winter weight and <laughs> gain some shoulder muscle back. Yeah, yep. Yep. wear out them elbows some more. Yeah, so. awesome. Thanks for joining us, Andy. Yep, Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Yep. Thank you for listening to the Ugly Bug Podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing and leaving a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you have questions or feedback, reach out to us via email at info at or leave a comment on our social networks.